So it basically cost us a championship, and I was mad, and I said on the radio, I said, if somebody doesn't go over there and kick his ass right now, I said, I am going to be completely disappointed. And Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour, presented by NASCAR on Fox. I'm Kevin Harvick. She's Caitlin Vinci. He's Mama Smith. Here we are. And here we are again. Once again, yes. yes. What a great weekend it was out there in the old VA. It was a little chilly, though. It was a little chilly. Was a little cold. Great crowd. I, I mean, what's, what's chilly to you? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's like, you're from Vermont. And I'm like, yeah, but that was like 15 years ago. My people are tropical people. <laughs> tropical okay. People. I need some sunshine and, you know. So water. what's chilly? You said it was anything chilly. Anything under it was, 50. It was like. Anything under 50, I'm like, not really. About. So that was just in the morning. Yeah, but Friday night when I was. You were out there for the Friday truck night race. it was Yeah, cold. the truck yeah. race. I was, I was shadowing fair. Josh. We, we'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. Yeah, well, I mean, not, not very often do we agree with you, but. We'll give it to you this Thank time. Thank you. They, yeah. uh, you know what is agreeing? Those shoes. We Yeah. Those sh I'm agreeing His? with those shoes. Are those you new like the shoes? I do. Have you worn them yet? I don't remember. No, you know yeah, what? I've, I've, I've kind of lost track. Um, so if if I have, I apologize. But if I haven't, there you yeah, go. here they are. No, they're, they're not I did the cow. Good. We're going to Texas. Those are cowboy boots. This ain't Texas. I don't have any cowboy boots. Wait, no? no? Really? I'm surprised. I don't have any cowboy boots. Oh. I have some. I have some snake boots that I got out got out this week to um, we're going Keelan and I are going hunting this yeah. week. So we're gonna go do do some turkey hunting and spend some time with our friend Bill Jordan yeah. and Tyler Jordan that was on the show earlier in the year from Love Realtree. That. So good time. Love that for you. Ate guys. up with it. There you go. Um, well, we have another ap episode on tap, and we want you guys to keep subscribing on YouTube wherever you get your podcast. Give us a five star review, leave a review, maybe a word for Kevin to say on the broadcast. So yeah. Get over there to YouTube and subscribe. Yeah. And Harvick Happy Pod nailed it this week. <laughs> on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I forgot about TikTok last week. We got a TikTok. NX. NX. No, I, no, I said Twitter. No, I don't have I don't have TikTok. You don't have it. I mean, I have TikTok, but I don't use TikTok. That's, we'll oh, get you on it. We'll get you on like that dating app. I don't use that anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> they, there was no dating apps. Yeah, you didn't have that. What's back it called again? You had to date Raya. the old fashioned Raya. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. That's where I'm going to find my wife for lunch, Pew. <laughs> let's, uh, let's Mamba's got a robust dating life, I've learned uh, oh, as of late. Good yes. for him. Yeah. Proud of him. Congratulations. Congrats. All right, guys. We're going to be talking about Martinsville today, previewing Texas. Of course, we got your social sips of course. as well. And um, what do you want to start with? The word or hot dog? No, no. Let's, <laughs> okay, let's start with the hot dog um, because I think that's where it was the most fun. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you did a great job. Uh, Taste tester. It was it was. Peer pressure. Look at this. Mike Joy is <laughs> like, you are not leaving this booth until you eat this hot dog. Wow. And that hot dog sat there for a little bit. And finally, <laughs> I was like, my gosh, I have to eat this hot dog. So they found one <laughs> finally with no onions. And it was actually pretty good. You're I was, kind of shaking I, your head, I, though. I, I, <laughs> I actually like hot dogs. And that one was was uh, was pretty good. So it go. looked terrible. Yeah. Tasted fine. So Mike Books and I had a hot dog and old party pooper Clint. What's he got? Pasta? He's got what is pasta. that? I, he's pasta. Oh, wow. Trying to figure out how to get rid of his second chin. <laughs> get up, Clint. You ain't hurt. <laughs> That's, oh, ask man. him. He that is, is hilarious. He is, he is the one that brought up his second chin. And he has <laughs> said he is very much... Uh, working on trying to get rid of it, so by eating pasta. Yes, by <laughs> eating plain pasta. So oh. it's all in how you, all in yeah. how you stage this. I, I see. All in well, how you present. Funny. I don't think you can drink bush lattes and get rid of the double chin at the same. Well, this time. is the same guy that drove his motorhome up there, and got to the racetrack and had no food. Oh. <laughs> so he left the booth on Saturdays. Man, I'm gonna be in. I'm in a hell of a mess here. <laughs> I said, Well, what's wrong? He's like, My wife's gonna be pissed at me because I don't. I haven't had any food. I made her drive up here. She's not really wanting to be here this weekend. And now we have oh no boy. food in the bus. So I'm probably headed back to get an earful. So <laughs> you can imagine that in a clip yeah. Right way. Yeah, yeah, you can't right just show up with the no food in the bus. And he, he parks on the on the back straightaway. Yeah. So he's he's over there uh, right in the action in the middle of the races and can see right down on on onto the back straightaway. So he had the best view in the house, but I'm not sure he had a happy house. <laughs> <laughs> not a happy house. Not a happy house. Uh, but... Happy hot dogs. Happy yes. hot dogs. And, and I'm 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 a fan. It was good. It good. would have probably good. been better if it was warm, 
but it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was good. <laughs> cold it was hot good. Dog. It was cold, cold hot dog with chili on it. So <laughs> I guess it was as good that. as it could be. The Martinsville Glizzy. You got to yeah. get it if you go to Martinsville. But okay. we, instead of Glizzy, we went with Salty this week. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so Mamba, Mamba, Mamba presented me Glizzy. Presented me Glizzy. Uh, on, on Friday <laughs> evening. And we did some research on Glizzy. And it was probably not appropriate for the broadcast. So okay. uh, there are a lot of hot dogs in Martinsville, and Glizzy definitely fits the hot dog piece of the of the of Equation. the description yeah. <laughs> of the word. Um, but we were a little nervous about saying it on the broadcast, so we went with salty, okay. which you apparently said multiple times. Yeah. I said a couple of times. It's okay. an easy place to say salty because True. usually I'm the salty old man, and but I'm gone. So now Truex was a salty old man last week, and this week we had some salty. Some salty people. No one was happy. No, no one was happy. I, I mean, it's a look. Martinsville is a. It's a much different race than it used to be with this particular car because uh, of the way that you drive the car. The fall off is is there's not very much fall off. It builds a lot of rubber, and it's really hard to make your car handle. And uh, you either have to go right on the curb below the rubber. You have to split the rubber going into the corner and diamond down, or stay splitting the rubber all the way up off the corner. And nine times out of ten, your car is not gonna turn very well in the rubber and then it's going to snap loose on the exit. And, and the longer that you run, the worse that tight gets in, in, in the center of the corner. And really William Byron had everybody covered at the, at the end of the race. He drove from, I think 18th, yep, 18th yep. to first. Um, Pretty amazing. Rudy had a great call in, in the pits late in the race and, and was able to, um, you know, put them in a position to pit. He pitted first, he gained the two and a half seconds that he needed. And then William Byron made the pass for the lead. But, uh, here you you see William Byron at, at the end hold off Chase Elliott and all three of those Hendrick cars one two three Chase got a little high uh, and William got a gap and and Kyle Larson actually actually got by by Chase at the end but great day for William Byron uh, Hendrick Motorsports celebrating you know the the 40th anniversary of that of that big first win um, and I see William Byron hit the wall right there he made a funny <laughs> he made a funny yeah. comment after the race that not not knowing why he hit the wall so many times. <laughs> That day, and then he did a donut right over in, in front of the fifteen hundred Hendrick employees that were on the backstretch off a of turn two, and he knocked that thing right into the fence, nose first over there as well. So um, maybe William needs to go to my eye doctor. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe maybe he needs some glasses. You know, well, that's you how got, it started for me. You got the good frames. I kept right side in the I kept right side oh, the really? car into the fence, and I was like, man, I don't Can't I don't see. really know what's going on here. So um, went to the eye doctor and. Got it checked out. Got it checked out. My go. first ones were at the dirt race. Oh, that that's makes, when I yeah, put my that. glasses on for the first time was at the first dirt race. And I had these, these like sports glasses, like <laughs> right against my face and had a curved lens. I felt like I raced in a fishbowl. <laughs> that's why I wound up, with, I wound up with Hugo Boss metal armed yeah, glasses those. that fit in my helmet real nice. You got to take your helmet to the eye doctor and huh? try on all the, all the yeah. all the glasses. Well, there you go. Those glasses I, have stood the test of listen, time. Listen, that <laughs> that clip of Byron winning and just running up front is that not like the most Jeff Gordon? That's like one of the most Jeff Gordon looking clips I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Like it looked like his old car. Mm -hmm. The twenty four is popping. The red, the flames. It was ruby, ruby red. reds. Ruby yeah. red. Get it right. Like ruby sharp. right. Jeff was behind stage because they brought him out because he was um, a grand marshal this week. And I was talking to him. I go. Man, how have you not been racing for so long but still have the most swag in the garage? Because, <laughs> I don't know, man, but these guys got to catch up. And he's just like rolling through. It was, it was cool, man. It was a good weekend for Hendrick Motorsports. It yeah. was. And when you, when you look at everything that was, that was going on, there's just very few teams that can first have that much history. And second, to be able to perform under that pressure with everybody being there. And, and you know, I, I think it was... I don't even remember which Hendrick driver we interviewed them all, uh, but before the race, talking about the the pressure of of having to perform under those circumstances and how much they enjoyed being able to be in those moments, because in those moments, it, when the pressure's on and you've got all the all the cameras and people pointing at you as yeah. as um, you know the cars to beat and and the moment that you're in, it's like I mean that's like racing for a championship right there mm -hmm. with 1,500 of your own employees there and. Um, for, for them to go out and perform. I mean, that's, those are the moments that you live for as a driver to be able to perform under those circumstances and have all your people there <laughs> and get the W and not only a W, but a one, two, three. Yeah. Impressive. Um, yeah. So, you know, the only person that's going to be mad is probably Linda. I said this on a broadcast. Yeah. She's going to be mad because Alex Bowman finished eighth. 
Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be like, well, why didn't we have one, two, three, four? Yeah, why didn't we have right. one, two, three, and four? That's my, that's yeah. my favorite thing about uh, the Netflix show. That's one of my favorite lines with when Linda said that, yeah. well, I expect to have all four in the in the, I remember, yes, <laughs> in the championship four. In the championship right. four. Yeah. We, we yeah. should have all four she's, in the championship four. Hey, yeah. tough but those critic, are the expectations yeah. that mm-hmm. um, they quietly have. They they aren't going to come out. Rick's never going to come out and, and, and say, hey, you know, we expect to have all four cars in the championship four. But that's, like, I don't think she's really joking. No. I don't either. Because the, the expectation from Hendrick Motorsports or Hendrick Automotive Group is to is to be the best. And when you get in those private meetings with Rick, he's going to have, that's that's what he talks about. He talks about what do we need to do to win? And when we're winning, what do we need to do to win more? And he gives his people uh, the tools that they need in order to, to go out and perform, but also goes out and finds the right people because you're only as good as the people that you have around you and they do it as good as anybody. So Hendrick Motorsports rising to the occasion in a key moment. You mentioned the pit call with Rudy Fugel bringing William down yeah. before everyone else. Can you speak to that relationship with driver and crew chief and just having the trust there when your crew chief makes some of those different yeah. calls? Well, it's I've been categorizing as the rich get richer, right? <laughs> because they've won a couple races. Uh, they were in a position to gamble to say, okay, we're going to pit right now uh, because somebody has to start the trend of, of getting onto pit road and, and starting that, that pit cycle. But you know, at Martinsville, if the caution comes out that it's over, yep. like your, your day is, is, is over. So he was two and a half seconds behind when, when they pitted, came out of the pits. And by the time it all cycled through, he was racing for the lead with, with, uh, with the nine car and, and was able to, to put him in a position to, to have the lead and, and win the race. But um, having won a couple of races, you could take that chance and put yourself in a position to uh, make that call and be aggressive and, and the aggressive call won. And, and they had a great car. Uh, yeah. They had, they had driven from, from 18th all the way forward. And you heard a lot of guys talk about, you know, the, that it was hard to pass, but he didn't have any problem passing. Yes. And neither did your pick, by the way, Ryan Blaney. Oh, he battled through some champ. attrition. Champ. What a, champ some in, adversity. Champ was he was, they were in form. Listen, yeah. it, we've been talking about it all, all year because the Fords have been on this up and hill battle, but the 12 has been consistently running really well. Eh. He's been running well consistently. He's always eh. in the top 10. He's always know. in the top 10. He's not like running top five consistently, yeah. but he's always the- Had a couple bad weeks in a row. A couple bad weeks, but he's always probably the head of the Ford camp. Yeah. And- the more that they have that little bit of struggle and the more they fight through it, the harder it's going to be to beat them in the championship because they're yeah. going to have all this confidence like, okay, we're not that great when we unload, but we're going to figure it out. Yeah. And they keep doing that. And the other guy that, that has kind of figured it out at, starting at Richmond was Logano. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've, we've been worried about Logano for several weeks and they, they went through some struggles. He talked about going to North Wilkesboro and learning something at that test. And we saw him race for the lead at, at Richmond. We saw him up, up front. He didn't really race for the lead this week, but e- either way, they, they ran, they ran pretty solid, um, this, this last weekend at, at Martinsville, but the Blaney situation was really strange at the beginning of the race. It wasn't strange. It was great. Actually, uh, beginning <laughs> of the race, beginning of the race, he felt he was going backwards yeah. and you know, he couldn't, he couldn't find his way backwards fast enough at, at the beginning of the race. And then they had a pit stop uh, they came in, they didn't get the adjustment in the car. It actually was so bad that they actually came back to pit road, made the adjustment. And from that point on, they just continued to march forward. They made their car better. And by the end of the race, he was up racing and, you know, right around the top five. So that's the type of day that is championship caliber. Yeah. But both of those cars, um, 22 of Joey Logano and the, and the 12 of, of Ryan Blaney, both, both had good days. Uh, Chase Briscoe had a, had a good car. Yep. Uh, they kind of, they, they didn't, they didn't perform on pit road like they need to. If you're going to beat the Gibbs cars and the Hendrick cars, you're going to have to, you're going to have to make good pit stops consistently for the most part. And, and, um, they, you know, they made, they flubbed up one time on pit road. And next thing you know, they were eighth to 10th the rest of the day yep. and, and didn't, didn't make their way forward. Josh Berry had a good car. They were terrible on pit road, mm-hmm. uh, the, the whole day. Um, you know, they, they had They've had an injury on the pit crew and, and 
you know, it's just not gone well for them, but they, they've had cars capable of running in the top five and, and you got to put it all together. That's the thing that people don't realize whether you have a fast car or not, doesn't matter if you can't make a pit stop, mm-hmm. you can't make the strategy calls and, and, you know, you have to have all those things functioning well in order to win these races. That Josh Berry car looks sharp. Ooh, I love that. Did. That thing looks yeah. nice. nice. Mobile One yeah. does a, they do a great this job good, with, yeah. with all the promotions and activation. Were you they. jealous? Because, you know, I mean, like. <laughs> You would have driven the gold. That Did I look gold jealous? Standard. I'm in a, I'm I mean, in a freaking TV booth eating <laughs> hot dogs. <Yeah. laughs> wondering if I should say glizzy or salty. I mean, uh, so I'm not, not nobody's jealous. mad at me today. I didn't not have jealous. to run over anybody. I don't have to be mad at my pit crew. I don't That's have to be mad funny. at a bad call that was made on pit road. I No, I didn't He's miss. Good. Hey, you look great down there. <laughs> Happy Harvard. Keep digging, boys. You look yeah. good. Keep digging. Uh, what about your pick? You picked uh, Denny Hamlin, right? I, I think so. I don't remember. Oh, don't he worry. Did. I remember. So he Hamlin. elected to pit he at did. the end there. What did you think yeah, about well, the way they race? Martinsville is, uh, look, it's a racetrack that you have to evolve with the racetrack and you have to make the right calls uh, on your car and adjustments and things throughout the day. But they're another team that was in position to just say, screw it, we're going to pit and hopefully we're the first car to pit and we come out fifth uh, or fourth or whatever whatever the pit cycle was. Well, a whole bunch of them stayed out and they didn't they didn't have a chance. Yeah. But they, they, they're in a position to where they can uh, Chris Gabehart can make that call and be able to say, okay, well, let's just let's just see what happens here. But uh, early in the race, that car was really good on the long runs. And, you know, the last two runs of the race, they just, they weren't as good on the long run as they had been at the beginning of the day. Um, you know, early in the race, we saw Kyle Larson's car kind of shut off and and Bubba Wallace uh, almost passed him to to, to win stage one. Uh, and and they kind of had some issues on pit road. And his, his pit stall, I didn't really like his pick on, on his pit stall, uh, pit stall six Ooh. or seven. Okay, so uh, right. And I just, right I never like pitting in the corner and yeah. it, because it's hard to pick up. Some of the stalls are uneven for the crews and, and it's, um, I, I feel like what it gains on the timesheet, it's just difficult to be able to get the car in the pit box correct, gain the speed around the corner that, that you want to gain. But Bubba Wallace was was solid all day and, and able to uh, perform well and, and have a good finish as well. So I really wanted... I know Gabe Hart brought him the 11 down pit road. And like, if that worked, like if everyone pits, they're in a really good spot. If, <laughs> if the 11 stays out, the bulldog effect that I felt like was coming. Alternate theories. Yeah. Least, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he would have been probably fourth, right? Restarting the nines in front of him. If there's one guy that's not, that's going to mess up this whole thing for Hendrick, it was probably him. (laughs) And he was going to go into turn one or to turn three and ship the nine. Yeah. And then let's say the caution comes out. Now he's third. And then that's when stuff would have got really interesting. Well, the good news for Denny, look, it's not, it's not a secret. The good news for Denny that they weren't going to boo him any louder. So if he did spin oh, out the nine or anybody else, they, they weren't going to boo him any louder. My favorite thing that I saw this weekend was during qualifying. It was a pack of like six fans. Uh, it was like a dad, two dads and two kids and, you know, four kids. I don't remember what it was, but it was like a, a whole family that, that was there <laughs> together. And every time Denny would come by, they would just both just put their <laughs> mingle fingers up oh, like wow. this. Oh, <laughs> wow. Like Flip Bowman Gray, like, <laughs> Flip them off, though. The whole, every time oh, he came by, every, all three laps are qualified. All and the times, kids? All, three, all the kids and everybody. Wow. The kids and everybody, right. the whole family. And every time they go by, they just start laughing, <laughs> high-fiving each other. But it was like uh, the double bird 11s every time Denny came by. Do you ever- when he, when he, when I announced him this week, but I said starting wherever he was starting, they started booing before I could even get the rest of it out. Well, he, they popped him up on the oh. on the on the screen okay. above you. I didn't know that. Yeah, they popped him up on the screen <laughs> above you as he was walking out, and, and, and you introduced him, wow. and they just started booing. So I, I couldn't. The get Virginian. Um, those are all the, the the double birds thing though with the family. Those are all the things that you see in the little ISO screen. Never <laughs> never make it to TV, and that was um, that was a fun follow during qualifying. Did you ever have fans doing that to you, giving you the? Oh yeah, oh. I've had. A a lot of people flip me off at Martinsville. Okay. Yeah. Something Martinsville, about Martinsville? I, look, I, Martinsville was one of those places that it was kind of a love-hate relationship. Uh, the fans love going there. I hated going there because I just <laughs> never did very good. There's nothing wrong with Martinsville. It's a great racetrack, fun to watch. I had way more fun watching this weekend than I did driving. But um, it was just one of those places where they either loved me or they hated me. And there was a lot of people that didn't like me up there So mm. for, for a long time. I, I didn't start off on the right foot at Martinsville my first year. And it was towards the end of the season. I spun Bobby Hamilton out because oh. he passed me for the lead up there. In the and, cup race? 
in the cup race. Yeah. He passed me and I'm like, well, the only chance I have is to spin him out. So I spun him out. <laughs> and um, that didn't go over well. That's when he when he said I wasn't a scab on Earnhardt's butt. Oh, oh yeah. my! Yeah. yeah, what an insult! Yeah, yeah. so Jeez. it was it was uh, that was that was that was kind of how I got <laughs> off uh, off the ground at Martinsville. <laughs> and then the next year, I got thrown out at Martinsville for for spinning Coy Gibbs out. So it uh, was. Uh, it's always been. One I feel of those like places. Kevin has a whole other like persona than how he is now. He has like three. He, maybe There's yeah. Like, three? You know what the worst part about this show? Because I remember all these moments. Oh. The As we're part. sitting here talking about these things, there, there's not anything on this script about <laughs> any, any of that. <laughs> like, we off script. I now. love going Remember off that script. time that I was a scab on her and <laughs> uh, yeah, So, you know, you, you just never know what's going to pop up. I just you love don't. the Bobby Hamilton reference. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Bobby Hamilton love and that. I actually became really good friends. Of course you did. As, oh, as we went went down the road. Um, he was one of my one of my favorite humans in 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 racing and and obviously passed away way too early. But mm-hmm. Bobby Hamilton was was always obviously um one of the good ones. No, oh, I'm yeah. glad that relationship mended. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. You know, you, when you do a lot of stupid things, it's just like Chooks this week. He's like, Yeah, <laughs> I just popped my popped the lid this last week and hey. did a lot of things that you know, I'm not real proud of, and and I'm in that same category. I've done I've done a lot of things that I'm not real proud of. So everybody's uh, entitled to pop the lid from time to time, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta pop Sometimes off. Sometimes you just gotta yeah, <laughs> just pop off. Gotta That's do right. it. All right, what else stood out for for you from the race? We mentioned Bubba a little bit, but I mean, from qualifying to the race, great performance out of them. I feel like yeah. they've got some momentum building over on that team. Yeah, the yeah the 2311. I think last year was a lot of the 45 kind of lean the way, but iron sharpens iron. I think Bubba's always been a talent. That was never their question. It was putting it all together. Like Kevin was saying, like these races are really hard to win. You need to perform and execute on track, on pit road. Everyone needs to do their job well. And the 23 is starting to do that at a high level and it's starting to show up. And if you, if you hang around the top five, you're going to end up winning races. That just happens. So they're around the top five more and more now. So some wins are probably coming for the 20. And they expect it. Yeah. yeah. In order to do that and run in the top five and win races, you have to expect to do it. And and they're at a point where they they expect to go out and perform like that. And you heard Bubba say it, I think it was last week, uh, we just need to right the ship. Mm-hmm. We just need to get some good, solid, consistent finishes. And they've done that the last two weeks. And, you know, that car can be that car can be dangerous if it gets on a roll and and Bubba gets confident. We've we we've all talked about it. He's talked about it. He he can kind of go through these phases of being down on himself, but that man has no reason to be down right. at any point on himself. He when it's not going good, it's not because of him. You know, it's a hey, he needs to know that I just need to get in here and get with my team and figure it out. And that seems like what he said a couple of weeks ago is is we just need to put ourselves back to some consistency. We know we can do this. We just got to go out and and get it all together, and, and they have. So those are— oh. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say those are the notable goods. Yeah. There's always other side to this, the ones that are still not performing. Yeah. Who kind of stood out? Uh, you know, I think the RFK guys have just not run as well as I thought they would on all the short tracks. Uh, you know, these, these places that we went to that I really thought they would stand out like they did last year. Hasn't been the case. Uh, Brad struggled this weekend. Uh, they didn't. They they did okay at, at Richmond and, and Bristol, but they didn't really stick out. Right? They just ground out a top ten and and put themselves in a position to to be there late in the race. But um, I'm a little I'm a little concerned. I, I really thought Brad would would go out and and win win a race this year. And right now, it just that doesn't look to be the case, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, well. Last year, we <clears throat> we never would have thought that the 17 would have had three. Yeah. So, I mean. True. They had speed. They had speed. I, I guess I didn't notice the speed early on at, at last year. So, maybe because they've won races and are better, you expect them to be better. But I feel like they're similar to where they started last year. So, obviously, they've ri- they've righted the ship before. So We're getting like ready to be almost 10 races into this deal. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we you're over halfway through your Fox stuff. Yeah, I am. And and what that's that? terrible because I'm having fun oh, and yeah. I, I've I've really enjoyed being in the booth and and uh, I never thought that we would have as much much fun as we're having but that's awesome we have fun and it's fun to be able to to watch it from a from a different angle and and be able to yeah. understand things from TV. My favorite thing that people don't understand is they think we can cover every story. It's impossible to cover every story. I mm-hmm. promise you, we 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 cover we cover what's happening in the front a lot. Um, I I saw somebody mad at us on on Twitter because we didn't we didn't show whatever happened at the end with with Justin Haley and Austin Sendrick racing for 25th and it's like well we got we got 
pretty prominent car leading the race, won the race, interviews, everything is, it happens. Bang, bang, bang. I uh, wish we could show everything. But nothing, we can't. nothing annoys me more than people weighing in on how to do TV that don't know anything about TV. Yeah, it drives it's, me nuts. It's a tough balance, honestly. and, and I, I take it all. <laughs> I take it all in stride. Right, you just have to go out there and and, and cover what's what yeah. you can, and and we can't cover it all. Clint was like someone. Someone was talking about how you guys were kissing the butts of Hendrick and all the with all the. Mm-hmm. I'm like, first of all, it's their 40th anniversary, a milestone in the sport. They have 1,500 people over here. They have four ruby red race cars. They're yeah. standing out, and they're the fat. If they weren't in the top 10, yeah. you guys wouldn't have talked about them as much. They were literally dominating the entire event. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. My favorite is, is oh, they, they, we knew Hendrick was going to win from the beginning. They fixed the race. And it's, here we oh go. How? Here we go. How in the world would the you ever theorists. fix the race? The 42, that is the dumbest thing I've the 42 ever heard. catches on fire. <laughs> it was part of the script. Yeah. You mean, yeah, yeah. that's how yeah. they wanted it to go. They yeah. wanted a All right. with three to go. Two to go. We're going to have the 42 burn to the ground. All right. <laughs> that's the plan. You guys got it? Okay, go. When the All right, push the button. <laughs> yeah. Execute. Yeah. Unreal. Unreal. Uh, good times out there in Martinsville, Virginia. All right. Where we're headed next is Texas Motor Speedway, which is exciting. Uh, I think all of us probably would agree. We enjoy going out to Lone Star State for a race. You were really good there over the years in all the series. We had a we always had a good time at, at Texas and took a long time to to get to victory lane in the cup car. Uh, but we were always in contention to be able to run up front. I think the first time we went there as a group with with SHR, I think the front of the engine broke off. Yeah. Uh, the front of the crankshaft broke off yep. with a excellent. Yeah. <laughs> leading the race just absolutely destroying him. But it was it seemed like that stuff just happened for a while and then all of a sudden we were able to get to Victor Lane and then we did it again. Yeah, and clicking them off. Yeah, and clicked them off. Our trucks were always really good there. Uh, we went there in the, in the in Xfinity cars while we were at RCR and, and had the KHI teams. It was a lot like Richmond. We we expected to never lose there. And, okay. and if, if I didn't win, it, I expected one of my teammates to win because that's just where our cars were and, and, and the racetrack was really good for us. So um, won a bunch of races there. Yeah, that's sure. awesome. Good for you. Uh, you like going to Texas? You going? I've, you going this weekend? A little two step dancing? No, I've literally never been to Texas Motor Speedway. Really? What? I've never. Seen Are you going it. this week? No. Uh, maybe. Uh, we need to get that fixed. Yeah, the the beast uh, unleashed that is on Tyler Reddick's car might monster. be going out and doing some monster stuff. Might be doing some stuff with them. He's got, got a Bun B lot of thing. Out. You know, mm. he's got a lot of things going on over yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, he's a world traveler. World. Listen, so, I, so <laughs> you probably have plans. Already, but because you knew it was an off week, so you, you you could change plans and go. Yeah, but what what are your plans right now? Right now, yeah. Well, it's the second annual. Um, the second annual. It's because it's um. What's this weekend for the golf? golf Augusta, Mas- right? No, no, Masters? not Augusta. Masters. That one. Second Kids, annual Masters. Right? Right. I don't watch golf. It doesn't matter if you watch golf. I go for the parties. It's Augusta. It's the right? Masters. Yeah, the Masters. So, it's You're a, going. so you go you go for the parties to Augusta? <laughs> no, no, no. I go to Joey Denowitz's house for the Masters party. Oh, on oh. The weekend. Oh Why don't you guys just drive to Augusta and go to the party there? That sounds expensive, Kevin. Kevin's going. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. notice he didn't invite me. Well, it's not like I can just invite you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> you just said like you that. didn't you said you didn't <laughs> like golf. No, I I don't watch it a lot. I like it. So why would I invite you if you if you don't like golf? I do like golf. And you can't the- take your phone, so I don't even, you can't, you literally can't take your phone into the golf. Oh, really? Really? No, it's, it's the greatest day ever. Um, Why is that? It's a rule. Because it's like distracting, like if it I don't rains. know, but I love it. I, I think it's, imagine we should do that one day. We should just put our phones down and, and see if we can function. It, okay. I can function, but like my job is content. <laughs> Well, like you can't function there. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't take you. <laughs> All right. That was, so, that was my plan. And but maybe you'll go to Texas. Maybe I'll be at Texas. Okay, yeah. I got to bring this back to Texas, guys, somehow. So yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, I have been waiting a lot of years to ask you about 2014 when you decided to push Brad Kozlowski. Well, I think it was 15, wasn't was it? Was it 15? I think it was 15. It's, this is the wrong date on maybe. my paper. I don't know the exact year. I think it was 15. He, he it says was- it. Tyler, our producer, is saying it was 14. Uh, I know you love to correct me on here, I don't, but I'm. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say it was 15. I think it was 15 because I think it was 15. Because here, here, here's the deal. So in 15, I just felt like we had a lot of things go wrong. Everybody was talking about everything that we were doing wrong, hmm. um, and we needed to change the direction of the conversation. Now, was this the right thing to do? 
Just I don't know, but when we great. got done, when we got done, the conversation <laughs> was not about was not about me anymore. It was really about this chaos that that we decided. But definitely, when, when we talk about those not so proud moments, uh, this is definitely one of those moments where you're like, "This is at the top of the list." Yeah, this is pretty close to the top. But of it the was list. epic. What do you mean? I'm so glad he did. So it was let's, hilarious. Let's set the stage a little bit because yes, yeah, what, you go so ahead. So what we're watching is the brawl that started the Harvicking. And basically, Brad Keselowski went down into turn one on a late race restart, shoved Gordon out. I think Gordon gets a flat tire. Yeah. At this point, Jeff is, this is his retirement year. He wants to, he's trying to get into the uh, championship round. That's right. And Brad makes a <laughs> dive bomb move. And now they're on pit road and they're talking and Jeff is hotter than a match. And uh, Kevin just gives a little, a little boop. Yeah, well, it's it's one of those things, and and we've talked to, we've talked on here a lot about. Um, there's more to it than just driving the car, and sometimes you have to try to do different things to to redirect the conversation or put somebody in the fire that's not in the fire that you're, you're competing against. And this was a this was a very calculated moment. This was and premeditated. I thought, that, I thought that we could capitalize on this to to oh, to wow. to really turn the story on somebody else, but it was just, it didn't, it just didn't look good, but that's the way it worked out. It looked awesome. I thought it looked awesome. It turned I out, mean, it I mean, it was awesome to watch. It's not awesome to start, right? No. So I how premeditated? I mean, it had to have been a few minutes. I mean, I was leaning on the deck lid of the back of the car, watching everything go down. And I was Yeah, like, I remember you were like very I like, sly. I was like, there. oh man, get in there. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and next thing you know, there's a massive fight on, on pit road. And, You're like, and, whoopsie. And they, they, they weren't talking about me anymore. So that was one of those calculations that I should have recalculate. I would recalculate today recalculate. and not, not advise you to, to be, um, the one that, that does that, but it, it wound up changing the direction of the conversation. We went all the way to sure the, did. all the way to the championship for that year and, and put ourselves in position to, to win a championship. And I believe that was the year that Kyle Busch came back and beat us after it he was. broke his leg. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, so it was actually a smart decision. Then. Yeah. Well, I don't no know. Smart, but can it worked out? Did you see Jeff Gordon just full on like bull rushing the big guy? Like I don't know how little Jeff Gordon is able to get through this man who looks like he's two hundred and eighty five pounds. <laughs> yeah. And get a hand. It was a balance thing. <laughs> it was a balance, balance thing. But we've had some big moments at, at Texas. We and, sure and have. That that was a big moment uh, with with the brawl and everything that that had happened. But um, for for me, when I won my truck race there, mm. everything comes with a story. When I won the truck race there, uh, I don't remember what year it was, but it was the only time I ever won there. But we, Ron Hornaday was racing for the Truck Series Championship mm -hmm. against um, I don't remember who else. But we also raced Kyle Busch for the Owners Championship every year. Yep. And Kyle. Every time that we got on a racetrack, it was everything that you could do. To, if Kyle was winning truck races, I'd start running more truck races because I didn't like Kyle winning truck races. So we'd go out and start winning truck races and get our trucks back up to where it go. And then we, we'd start uh, beating Kyle. Kyle would go out and start running more truck races and he'd get his <laughs> trucks back. To, and it just, so back it was this forth. constant back and forth. But yep. it was the year Kyle got suspended for the cup race because he wrecked Hornaday under the caution. Yep. Yeah. So he wrecks Hornaday under the caution. I'm leading the race in, in the trucks and, and wound up winning the race. Well, on the radio, I was livid because Hornaday was going to win the championship that year. So it basically cost us the championship and I was mad. And I said on the radio, I said, if somebody doesn't go over there and kick his ass right now, I said, I am going to be completely disappointed in everything, everybody that is in that pit. Oof, well, man. I got mother function. <laughs> Josh is Josh going, Jones. He's going oh, after Josh Kyle Bush and, and he is... On his way to the garage and goes up into Kyle Busch's trailer and the NASCAR official pulls him, pulls him back. So, uh, pulls him out of the trailer, takes his hard card, puts him in the lounge of the, of the trailer. Oh boy. So I win the race and I'm just fuming, just waiting to get out of the truck. I get to, I get to, I pull into victory lane and the first person that is at my window is NASCAR security. Mike from, remember Mike yeah, from Mike, NASCAR security? Yeah, yeah. Um, so he, he is the first one to my window, takes the window net down, leans in my car. And he said, do not get out of this truck and make a scene. We have everything handled. And when you're done, you need to come to the NASCAR hauler. You're really getting scolded. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> okay. at that point they had already decided 
I guess, to suspend Kyle. Yeah. And everything was was handled at that point. But I didn't know my guy was sitting in the NASCAR lounge. <laughs> and I had to go retrieve Josh uh, oh. because he had tried to beat up Kyle Busch. He's like, I was just doing what I was told to do. So, Joshua Jones. Um, what a good always- friend. Yeah, he is a good friend. Happy belated birthday to old Joshua yeah, Daniel yeah. Jones, by the way. Yeah. That's a funny story. That is great. Yeah. I don't think we can talk about Texas without uh, tipping the captain Greg Biffle, who is an animal, was just an animal at Texas. Like yeah. that was like his spot. And he Ugh. comes back off the couch a yeah. couple years ago the and race. races the truck race with <laughs> Kyle Busch and dominates him. That's yeah. Right. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm sorry, what? Like, you were just, you haven't raced in like two years. Mm-hmm. And he spanked him. And then it was like, all right, I'm good again. Very unique track, though. I was going to say, what are the it's keys a, to it? You know, you got a really flat corner. They changed turns one and two. It's really wide and really flat. They're going to put the PJ1 down in the third groove like they like they normally have. Turns three and four there, super banked, super bumpy. Uh, they've ground the bump a little bit in in three and four, but it's still still pretty bumpy. So the way that you drive it is just completely different from from one end to the other. Um, turns turn one is just one of those corners where you get, you just got to get the thing in there. It's <laughs> unsettled because the racetrack is flat. With the cup cars, it's a really f- tricky balance in the in the in the heights of the car uh, because you want the car to be as low as possible in one and two to gain as much grip as possible, uh, being low to the ground. And in three and four, the car wants to hit the ground because it's got so much more load than, than turn one and two. And so you have to, you have to balance keeping it off the stops and keeping it off the ground to keep it as low as possible in turns one and two, but cars want to get r- really tight in the middle of one and two there, the way that the wind blows always oh, yes. uh, blows, uh, you know, pretty good there towards the exit of turn two. So you never know what you're going to get there, but really difficult track to make your car handle good. Mm. Any similarities to other mile and a half like Vegas? Three and four is is you know has some similarities to a typical mile and a half racetrack, but one and two is just really weird. It's a it's a very flat corner, and when they widen the corner, when you go to the entry of the corner, it's really hard to look out the left side of the car and be able to see the apex of the corner. Like it's so far down there that you can't see it. Interesting. And yeah. You just so you just have to go in the corner and just keep turning until you until you find the the <laughs> apex of the corner because it's so far down there and you're so far out next to the wall. A lot of times you won't even go all the way out next to the wall unless you're unless you're running that second lane. Yeah, this place is treacherous, especially one and two. I think we'll see a lot of air, arrow games being played. Uh, we yeah. saw it at the end of last year. Like, that's how uh, the five wrecked uh, right. going for the win against Bubba. That's kind of how Bubba ended up losing that race, too, is just getting someone on your door, and then they kind of suck you around, and then people are mad because they're like, you put it on my door, and it's like, yeah. well— it's kind of it's okay. a little bit of defense. Yeah, and that, there. that second so. groove, that second lane up there gains more grip as as you go through the day, and that that PJ one gets run in, and it becomes the 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 dominant groove. But you got to be able to, you got to be able to cut to the bottom and and pass people uh, if you're going to have one of the cars that that is going to win the race. But track position will be important. So you've been reflecting on some of the wins you've had there. There's been some strange things that have happened to you at this track as well. I think of the parachuter who damaged your car yeah. before the race. This was 2012. What do you remember about this whole thing? Well, I remember <laughs> going to to uh, driver intros and, and then I get to my car and there's no car. And I'm like, where's my car? Well, <laughs> where's my car? That guy's sandbag on the bottom of his flag just completely demolished the left side of my car. So they had to go weld the door back on my car before the race. So... Uh, wow. My car was was in the garage uh, getting repaired. They actually delayed the the start of the race so that we could fix our car um, because it was just one of those circumstances yeah. that was strange. unforeseen. Uh, Very strange. Yeah. <laughs> and that was also the place that I got the $100 bill. Stuck, oh, stuck the 100 bill the story. That's yeah. right. I yeah, so that's the track that, that I had a $100 bill get stuck on the front of my car and that's came funny. into the pits and it was still attached to the grill. There you go. I, I so, mean, thanks. we talk about error all the time and where that bag hit on the left side, like there was no like, oh, it'll be fine. Coming back. Like, from no, that, no, no, no. Yeah. Like you had no. to like you had to go fix it immediately. Well, the door was broken. So yeah, the was phone killed. was hanging out. Oh. The door was the, the wow. door was actually oh detached. <laughs> <laughs> they, those doors had a seam right in the middle yep. of them and at the top, and then it was actually just laid open. So hmm. That's bigger than a parachuter. Got to watch out for those. Yeah, it was, it's a windy place. It's Coming a windy hot. place. Coming in hot. <laughs> Let's fast forward to 2018 when you took a selfie and gave the checkered flag to a young fan. I this did. was so cool. The kid looks stunned, I might add. I'm probably just like, what is happening to me? Yeah, right what made now? you do this? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that fight. It, just, I'm, I'm not sure what was the final deciding factor, but 
it was just adrenaline. It was fun to to be able to just do something different and I love that the kid out of the grandstand and and was able to uh, give him the flag and take a picture and and we um, I don't know it, it it's just one of those sporadic spur of the moment things that you just that's a do cool something one, different so always fun to um, to be able to do stuff like that and you, I, I love the kids nothing against the adults but the kids are way more fun to absolutely interact with and sign yeah. autographs for 100%. And you know, love, love the adults too but the kids in in that situation that's something that keep that kid as a race fan for his whole life. I was going to say he will probably remember that for the oh, rest yeah. of his life. Yeah. What for a sure. cool moment. Do it for the kids. For sure. yeah. That's right. If nothing else, do it for the kids. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Denny and William have won the last four races. Will that trend continue? What say you two? Um, Mama? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're going to Texas, and I'm William pretty sure <laughs> William Byron won here very recently at Texas. So yeah. um, I would say he's going to be, a, they're just, they're just jiving, man. Like Rudy's got the team. They got maximum confidence. William's got maximum confidence. But I would say this weekend, I'm looking at 20, the 23 and the 45. They have a, you know, that 2311 has a little bit of redemption. I think that they mm-hmm. feel like they lost their championship opportunity yeah. here at yes. Texas. And I feel like this is a Bubba Wallace kind of racetrack. Yeah, and I, I feel like Texas and Kansas are Bubba's two best places yep. typically. And you expect them to go there and, and contend for the win. And and I, I agree with you. I know that's rare, but I, I agree with you. <laughs> Twice in one day. Yeah, I, I wow, agree with you that, that, um, that those cars are going to be good this weekend. It's just typically been a good racetrack. We hadn't raced here in the spring in a while. Mm-mm. So yeah. to, to go back a couple times this year will be interesting to see what shakes out because really it's been the the Hendrick cars and the Gibbs cars. I think the 23, I should say the Toyotas yeah. and the and the Hendrick cars. And I think that the 40, uh, the 45 and the 23 this weekend will, will be in the mix again. So um, Tyler's kind of gone through his, his short tracks and haven't seen a lot of him at, at the, at the short tracks, but I think they will be, I think they will be on point this week. Okay. We'll make our picks later in the show, but it's time now for your social sips. Mamba, you're up. Social sips. sips. of water. <laughs> mm. Take your time. the H2O. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> wish that, I, wish that, I wish that cup had a picture of my face on it like this. We should this switch one. cups. We, you, we could switch Look. cups. As long as we clean it first because I, yeah. I don't. Look, I, I feel like it'd be better if you had to <laughs> drink out of the cup with my face. Yeah. Probably I've got it. this one. Yeah. Your she's, face. Got, she's, got you, she's got you on it. That looks like a <laughs> win. It's a win. Yeah. That's the artwork one. What do you got? All right. Mamba's social sips. We got to start out at the top. Everyone, this was wild. So this was probably Thursday night, I think, uh, on Twitter X. (laughs) Denny Hamlin and Marcus Smith, which is a very odd two to kind of lock horns. This is very odd. Going at it with a bunch of jabs back and forth. And uh, they weren't. They weren't small punches. They were haymakers to an ego. Yeah. So everyone saw it. And then Mark, and then it ended, they ended it and it was cool. But uh, what were you, what was your take? When I you was shocked. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I was really shocked that I woke up to see all those tweets. What do we call them now? It's are tweets. they tweets? I, I'm, tweets? I'm sorry. Yeah. It's Twitter. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Tweets. I was just, I, it's X, but do we still call them tweets? Yeah. hundred percent. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, I was, very surprised when I woke up to see the uh, back and forth between these two because um, I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's more to the relationship that that we don't know. Much like we talked about with with Martin Truex last week, is there something Else. internal that that mm-hmm. is putting pressure on him? Uh, is there something uh, more of a backstory between between these two? But I think in the end they decided that it that it needed to end and. Um, Kind of just to kind of just let it go, but it was all over the start of of some paving issues that they had at Sonoma. Yeah, yes. And you know, Denny fired off, and then Marcus fired back, and and so oh. it was um, it was definitely definitely an interesting conversation that I'm sure there is uh, some 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 backstory to the frustration between the two, but maybe not. Yeah, and at the end of it, Denny and Marcus all co-signed well. and. They're all cool. And everyone's, well. everyone's friends all over again, which yeah, is typical and, in racing. And, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that the, you know it's 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 something that that caught us all off guard, and I think that's definitely one of those moments where you have to just, all right, we we might just need to let somebody else read this before I send it. You think I should send mm-hmm. this? I do right. that. I do that sometimes. I'll, I'll hand my phone to the line, and you think I should send this? No, you should delete that. So <laughs> if you, you have to think about board, it, delete yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Type, type it out. True. Don't hit send. Just. 
look at it for Let a minute. Let it sit yeah. in your drafts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing that happened, it's kind of a mix of Richmond and Martinsville. Yes. So at the end of Richmond race, Bubba gets into the back of Larson. These two have had like some on track altercations before, but like they're, they are actually friends. And uh, they taught and Bubba like, this is karma. You know, I got karma coming to me. Well, he is about to win the pole at Martinsville. One of his better tracks, favorite tracks. He's won them in the truck race. And of all people, Kyle Larson, the last car on track, bumps him off the pole by literally, what was it, one one thousandth of a second? One one thousandth yeah. of a second. And, and <laughs> they have a little moment here on Pit Road, and Bubba was like, yep, that's karma. And they have a funny edit. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go to Bubba Wallace's Yeah, good Twitter, edit on that. Instagram. Yeah. I thought that was an awesome moment. Yeah. But that's how it works. Anytime yeah. you have an issue with somebody or something uh, where you spin somebody out or hit somebody or crash into somebody the next week you're in the truck with them at driver intros or they're beating <laughs> you for so one awkward. thousandth of a second and you're in the truck with <laughs> them at driver intros. And you're in the truck with them. Uh, you know, so that's just the way that our sport works. You live, you know, six feet from each other. You pit stalls are six feet from each other. The haulers are all parked six feet Buses. from each other. Yeah. <laughs> and you're all in this same circle of life all year long. Yeah. And if you don't fix things like that, uh, they'll fix themselves in situations like that. And karma is a real thing. I promise. It sure is. Karma yeah. is a real thing. I, I think for them too, specifically, the it, it's good for everyone to see that they have a good relationship. I agree. Yeah. Like people outside looking in from all the stuff that's happened, their relationship is good. So everyone can you can be a Larson fan and a Bubba Wallace fan. It's completely okay. Uh, and the last thing, we take a lot of shots at Clint on this show. I feel like Clint <laughs> yeah. takes a lot of L's, but he got you this weekend, Kev. He did. Kev Bobby got you. Kev so Bobby. let's uh. Talk about this during his tailgate kings segment uh, this weekend at Martinsville. He found a dog named Harvick, and oh, uh, the dog. dog actually goes fetches beers. And he said, "This is the best Harvick he's ever met." It, we well, I, I'm I'm still on the fence as as to whether the dog's name was actually Harvick, but. <laughs> He Either way, it. the story is now told that the dog's name was Harvick. And <laughs> Clint got to tell Harvick what to do. And Harvick, <laughs> Harvick went and got Clint a beer. And he was so proud of this. They wouldn't tell me. I didn't know anything about this on the broadcast until they played it. And I could kind of tell something was going on with some of the things that were being said and, and before, they, before they rolled that video during the broadcast. And Clint was so happy in the booth. I bet. And so proud to be able to show that story about Harvick fetching him a beer. It was pretty awesome. The dog, the dog knew exactly what to do. And I yeah. told him afterwards, I, I said, hey, I, I mean, I've got babies named after me. Um, their name is Harvick. Wow. My dog's named Harvick. I have a, I have certified race horses that people have sent me the, <laughs> the certificate of the Are name of the horse. Yes. That's Being funny. Serious. So I didn't, he didn't know of any. Any dogs or horses named Boyer. Or people. That dog people. understood the assignment. There's a though. human. There's humans named Harvick. Yeah. Good right, dogs. Let's see, let's see the beer. video here because yeah. we got it here. Yeah. Everyone knows I love showing off our NASCAR fans. And boy, do we have some here in Martinsville. We got them from Ohio here, New York. Local boy right here. And the best one of all, we got Harvick. <laughs> Harvick, go get me a beer. Yeah. Oh goodness, that's I don't even know what to say. He got me. Yeah, I I would need a dog that can fetch me beers. That seems like a good thing to have. I don't know, Caitlin. That's pretty lazy. Is it? (laughs) I don't know, Caitlin. That is that is that is the ultimate end of lazy. When you can spend the time to train your dog to go get you a beer. I don't even have a dog that you could be walking over to get out of the ice chest yourself. There you don't go. Don't back off of that. Don't let him bully me. Bully and, lazy. That. and you're going to drink the beer after it's been in the here. dog's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> what yeah. do you call dog's me lazy about its before? <laughs> yeah, but your dog licks you in the. Okay. But don't you have a dog? I do have a dog, but I'm not going to. Does it lick the... you? No. No. I don't really like. I, you don't, don't like the wait, dog? Wait, 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 don't oh, no. Don't say it. Don't say it. Listen, I don't really like dogs. I like my dog. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Our dog is our dog is our dog is okay, but I'm not a dog lover for sure. Okay. I, I would definitely think twice about drinking the dog's beer. Mm-hmm. That it's it your me. beer that the dog okay. brought you because it loves you. Yeah. I don't think your cat's gonna be able to bring you a beer. Yeah, but the dog's gonna lay on its ground and lick its own butt. Yeah, they got do you have a cat? We have two cats. What, is, oh, okay. what does yeah. the cat do? The cat, what do you mean? <laughs> the, cat, the cat's not gonna lick its own butt. The cat destroys. What do pets do in general? They destroy my house. The, the cats, okay. The cats pee on everything. The dogs, 
The dog slobbers on everything. That's what we got. We're moving on to this. As invigorating as this conversation is, we're going to last call now to give our picks for the weekend who we believe can get it done out there in Texas. Who wants to go first? Uh, uh, I'm taking Bubba. Uh, okay. Sure first. Yeah. Love it. So, Bubba Wallace. I, I knew you were going to take Bubba, and I'm like, I'm taking Bubba. <laughs> you're going to let me go first, and now he's going to have to think, and this is going to be difficult. Oh, okay. All right. What who is say, it? Mama? No. What's your pick? Oh, mine's oh, he Tyler needs, Reddick. He needs a minute. He needs mine's a minute. Tyler Reddick. Uh, he's won before out at Texas, and we've been talking about him. I think this is his weekend. I think Tyler Reddick gets it done. Who you got? This, okay, let's think. Uh, Kyle Larson drives a five. D- yeah, this is so. This is so unfair. Uh, I Denny thought I was Hamlin, being. Denny Hamlin drives eleven. I'm not doing. He's thinking. The, he's thinking down the grid right now. Yeah, I am. So I'm gonna go a little off script. Okay. Because someone has to. Uh, I'm gonna go with the eight of Kyle Busch. I like wow. that pick. Um, hey, that's that's fun. way off script. Yeah, RCR has RCR has stolen one races at Texas before. There's always like a late race caution. They've done it off strategy. Um, they have intermittent speed in the eight car. And I'm so fingers crossed that we're going to hit it this weekend. And me and Kyle have a little, nice little handshake out driver intro. So I'm going to give it. I'm gonna, Kyle, Kyle's yeah. still in a good mood. Yeah, he's still happy. With everything going it, that has been so up and down. That's good. I sat with Kyle at Wake County this this last weekend watching Keelan and Brex, Brexton practice. And he's still nice, just chugging along in a good mood. So... Keep it up, Kyle. Yeah. Don't go off the deep end. Yeah, no. We all have faith Kyle Bush will get it done. Okay, so you got a big interview coming up this week on the show. Tell us about it. I do, yeah. We've got uh, former uh, New York Yankee manager. Cool. Coach uh, Joe Girardi. That's I still call him awesome. coach. Now coach. TV broadcaster on the Yes Network for uh, Yankees. So I'm looking forward to um, interviewing uh, Coach Girardi today. He's He's been a, he was a huge influence for, for me when I was getting ready to wrap up the career, had some great advice. We've become friends, uh, over the years and, and, uh, uh, Gene Monahan, who was the longtime New York Yankees trainer. That's how I met, uh, coach Girardi. So, um, that's neat. Fun, fun times. Yeah. yeah we look forward to hearing that yeah. conversation. Okay. Another episode in the books, guys. We encourage everyone to keep following us on X, Instagram, Facebook, subscribe on YouTube as well. Leave us a five-star review and uh, we'll see you guys after Texas.